All right, everybody, welcome back to the last topic of rotational motion, angular momentum. All right, so a few things to know here. We have translational motion, uh, which was P, is equal to mass times velocity. Okay, this was the formula we knew with translational motion. Now, when it comes to angular momentum, it's represented with capital L. And instead of mass, it's the rotational mass or inertia. And instead of velocity, it's the angular velocity over here. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. Another important thing to think about, a uh, know, is angular momentum of a particle. Okay. So it's going to be <laughs> the momentum, the linear momentum that we knew from before, but it's going to also have how far it is from the axis. So it's going to look like this. I'm going to do a few examples of this. I know there's a lot of formulas here. So, but we should make sense of it as we do these example problems. All right, we're going to move on. Here's a video kind of explaining a little bit of things, so it's important to watch. Um, I'm going to keep going. All right, so starting out with a pretty tough one here, uh, but let's see how we can do. A person stands at the center of friction of a frictionless turntable with arms outstretched and a five kilogram dumbbell in each hand. He is set rotating, making one revolution in two seconds. Find his angular velocity if he pulls the dumbbell, dumbbells inward to his stomach. His moment of inertia without dumbbells is 3 kilogram meters squared with arm outstretched and is 2.2 kilogram meters squared with his hands at his stomach. The dumbbells are 1 meter from the axis initially and 0 0.2 meters at the end. Okay, a lot going on here. Uh, 5 kilograms, 5 kilograms, 5 kilograms, 5 kilograms. Uh, 1 meter one meter, 0.2 meters, and 0.2 meters. Dumb. Okay, inertia of this guy is three. Inertia of this person with the arms in the center is 2.2. Anything else? Okay, that's a lot. Okay, the premise of this, and with a lot of momentum problems, is the momentum at the beginning, initial, is going to be equal to the momentum at the end. Nothing is moving translationally. It's only rotationally. So we're just going to be looking at that. So how we're going to look at this is the inertia at the beginning is equal to, oh, not the inertia, the mo angular momentum at the beginning is equal to the angular momentum at the end. So let's kind of write this down. Ooh, there's a lot though. <laughs> there's a lot to do here. So that's uh, that's the main thing. But let me go over here. So I guess let's look at the beginning first. This guy. We know that the inertia with the arms in is 2 point kilogram meter squared with his hands at the stomach. Okay. But we also have these heavy dumbbells here. So we have to find the inertia of that. And how we're going to do that is we know that the sum of all mass times r squared is going to be equal to the inertia. So I'm going to just find the inertia of the dumbbells, uh, inertia of dumbbells. Uh, that's going to be the mass of the dumbbell, which is 5 kilograms, and how far it is from the axis of rotation, which is 0.2 squared. And there's 2 on both sides, 0.2 away, so I'm going to do plus 5 times 0.2 squared. Okay, and let me put this in my calculator, 0.2 squared times 5, and then I could just do times 2. Okay, good. So that's 0 0.4 kilogram meter squared. And this is the inertia of the dumbbells when it's pulled in like this. So 0.4 is the uh, inertia of the dumbbells plus the inertia of the person is 2.2. So the inertia total for this guy is going to be 2.6 kilogram meter squared. Okay, that's with its arms in. Now with its arms out, let's do that here. Sum of all mass times radius squared. So we have 5, uh, that's the inertia. So we have 5 kilograms, and it's 1 meter away this time, so 1 squared, plus the other one is 5, and 1 meter away from the center, and that's squared. So that's going to be 5 plus 5, so this is going to be 10 kilogram meter squared. Okay, but we also have to add the person which is 3 kilogram meters squared with arms stretched out. So we need plus 3. So this is going to be equal to 13 kilogram meters squared.
square. Okay, this is arm stretched out. This one is arm inside. Okay, hope that made sense. Watch it again if you need to. I know that was kind of a lot. But now that we know that, let's go back to this uh, conservation of angular momentum here. Oops, let me put that a little more sideways. Okay. Okay, so what we have, or I should say what we know, is we have the inertia at the very beginning with his arms outstretched is a total of 13. And then the omega, how fast he's going at the very beginning, we know it's going one revolution in two seconds. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by 2, or just pi. <laughs> and that's going to be equal to when his arms are in. We found out that's a total of 2.6 uh, omega final. So now we can just find what omega final is equal to. All right, 13 times pi divided by 2.6, and we get 15.71 radians per second. Okay. All right, I, that was a bit hard. There was a lot going on there. Watch it back if you need to. All right, moving on. Uh, another cool video kind of demonstrating angular momentum a little bit and kind of what we talked about uh, with being able to go faster when you put your arms in. Okay, uh, example 35. A door one meter wide of mass 15 kilograms can freely rotate about a vertical axis through its hinges. A bullet with a mass of 10 grams and a speed of 400 meters per second strikes the center of the door in a direction perpendicular to the door and embeds itself there. Find the door's angular speed. Okay. And is kinetic energy conserved. Okay. A few things. Uh, this bullet is going 400 meters per second. Its mass is equal to 0 0.01 kilograms. The door has a mass of 15 kilograms. And I think that's mostly it. Okay. So, what we should know, to do, 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 find the door's angular speed. Find the door's angular speed. Okay. So, for part A. A few things going on here. What we're going to be doing similar to last time is whatever the angular momentum is at the beginning, is equal to the angular momentum at the end after the collision, in this case, a collision happening. But we need to find the inertia similar to last time as well. So before the bullet hits, we have an inertia of the door. Okay, so we have the inertia of the door. We know the axis of rotation is here. And inertia of that is going to be one third. The mass of the door is 15. The length of the door is one meter wide. So then we could figure out that. That's just gonna be, I think five, right? 15 divided by three. And we get five kilogram meter squared, okay? Another thing that we should know is that right before this bullet hits the door, there's also gonna be a certain amount of inertia. So inertia of bullet and we can find that as sum of all mass times r squared because it's pretty much just like a point. So that's going to be a mass of 0 0.01 and the radius is going to be 0.5 away. So that's going to be 0.5 squared times 0 0.01 is really small. 0 0.0025 kilogram meter squared. Okay, and then what we should know is that when this, so they're going to have like the same amount of inertia at the beginning and the end. Okay, and okay, so the angular momentum at the beginning. So at the very beginning, this door is not moving, right? The door is not moving. It's not moving angularly at all. It's not moving translation at all. But we have this bullet that's about to hit the door. And it's going to give it angular momentum. So we can use that particle uh, formula, if you guys remember from last time, the angular momentum of the particle. Oops. So, why isn't it going? Okay, so we can do R times M times V here. So we have the radius of how far it is, which is 0.5. The mass of it, which is 0 0.01. 
and the velocity which is 400 okay the only thing that have angular momentum at the very beginning is this bullet that's about to hit the door okay at the end the whole door with the bullet is going to be hitting it so there's going to be the angular momentum is going to be five of the door but that's also going to be combined with the bullet that gets lodged inside of it so five plus 0 0.0025 and then the angular momentum final that's what we're looking for so let's kind of combine all this we have 400 times 0 0.01 times 0.5 divided by 5.0025 and we get omega final is equal to 0 0.4 radians per second Okay. Uh, part B is, is kinetic energy conserved? Well, this is a perfectly inelastic collision. And if you remember that from last time, kinetic energy is not conserved. You can prove it by trying to find what the kinetic energy is at the beginning of the bullet and then finding what the rotational kinetic energy is afterwards. But it will show that it lost kinetic energy. Okay, moving on. Uh, a metal bar is hanging from a hook in the ceiling when it is suddenly struck by a ball that is moving horizontally. The ball is covered with a glue so it sticks to the bar. During this collision, is is it A, ang uh, is angular momentum conserved, B, is angular momentum and linear mo momentum conserved, or C, is linear momentum conserved? So what's going to be happening here is since it's uh, it won't be able to move translationally because this hook is kind of keeping it in place however the hook will allow for it to move rotationally moving it like that so angular momentum will be conserved so it's just going to be angular momentum is conserved because it's free to rotate but it is not free to move translationally or linearly so only angular momentum is uh, conserved because this hook is going to be preventing it from moving translationally all right moving on a wooden uniform bar is at rest in space. It has a mass of 2 kilograms and a length of 1.5 meters. One, on one end of the bar, it is struck by a clay ball of mass 0.3 kilogram and that is moving with the speed of 2.4 meters per second. The clay ball, ball sticks to the wood. A. At what point did, does the wooden bar rotate when struck? Okay, so this has a uniform bar, meaning that when it rotates, it's going to be rotating right in the middle. However, when this thing sticks onto it like this, the road where it's going to rotate from is going to change from wherever the center of mass is. So it's going to be like somewhere over here. So we have to find what the center of mass is. So I'm just going to do uh, center. The, I'm going to say y direction center of mass is going to be equal to uh, the mass of one object times the position of one object. The mass of the second object times the position of the second object times mass of one uh, divided by mass of one object uh, plus the mass of the second object. So let's plug that in. Let's do the mass of the uniform bar first. Uh, I'm going to say this is the zero point. So mass of the uniform bar is two kilograms. And it's before it is hit, its center of mass is right in the middle. So if this is 1.5, that means it's going to be 0.75 meters. Okay, so that's going to be 0.75. Plus the mass of the other object, this is M2. That has a mass of 0.3 kilograms. And it's going to hit it at the edge, right? Uh, the edge. So that's going to be 1.5 meters away from this part. Divided by the mass of both objects, which is going to be 2. Plus 0.3. All right, so let's figure out where the center of mass is. Two times 0.75 plus 0 0.3 times 1.5 divided by 2.3. 0 0.85. 0 0.85 meters. So, like I said, it's going to be more like here. This is the center of mass. Okay, above from the bottom of the bar. 0 0.8 meters above the bottom of the bar. Okay, B. How fast does a clay and wooden bar move? Uh, how fast does a clay and wooden bar move translationally after it's struck? Okay, so part B is actually just a regular momentum problem. So 
momentum before the collision is equal to momentum after the collision. Even though it's rotating, it's not asking us about angular momentum, it's just asking us about the translation momentum. And we should know when a collision happens, as long as it's free to rotate and move, momentum is conserved and rotational motion is conserved. So at the very beginning, the bar is not moving, it's at rest in space. But the ball is moving, so it has, um, it's moving two kilograms. Uh, and, oh, sorry, sorry, not moving two kilograms. It has a mass of 0 0.3 kilograms and a velocity of 2.4 meters per second. I could put a negative, but it's just asking for how fast it is, so uh, maybe I'll just put a negative. Okay, negative. And then afterwards, it's going to hit this bar and it's going to combine together. So it's going to be 2 plus 0.3. So 2 plus 0.3, B final. And B final is equal to right, negative 2.4 times 0.3 divided by 2.3. Uh, and we get negative 0 0.31 meters per second. And how fast is just the speed? So 0 0.31 meters per second. All right, guys, I hope that helped. That is the last part of rotation of motion, what I think is the hardest part of mechanics. So you got through it. Good job, everyone. See you with the next unit. Bye.